had a vacancy there that we ought to go for, uh, for brilliance. Uh, Abe Fortas says he's got to point this fellow right from Texas. Well, I think Wright's uh, awfully good. He's, he's not a name. Oh, no. He said he's the best lawyer, though, to for the Supreme Court. I don't, uh, I haven't had that close contact with him. I, uh, I don't know. I never heard of him. I think he's barred because he's from Texas. Just temporarily. Yeah, he's not really a Texan. He's a Yale man. Uh, he's, uh, he's pretty highly regarded, but he's, uh, in terms of name, he wouldn't compare with, uh, say, Archie Cox. Archie Cox was regarded as a clerk, but in. No, Archie was uh, a distinguished professor at Harvard at the time. What was his name? He's not the poet of the Senate. He's up there. Uh, I looked upon him. And Archie was usually uh, been thought of as kind of an academic kook by most lawyers. Right, and he was uh, regarded up there as just a, a kind of a burrhead. Uh, uh, Pompadour cut to clerk of Kennedy's like Ted Sarn. That's the way he's regarded as Kennedy. Sat back there on the row and tried to explain to Kennedy what was in the bill. Labor bill. Uh, when he was there, I don't think he had any great reputation. Uh, well, he would, I, I would say that in the academic field, he would have been looked upon as uh, in the top three at Harvard. I think he had a and left you with a hell of a reputation as a I see hope. Uh, I see that uh, the Lester's won nine, lost five. I guess you go up with just those you can win, don't you? <laughs> well, you can, but uh, Thurgood's not that kind. He's taken some losers. I've had him say at least twice that he just wouldn't give that case to anybody else in the office. And I said, well, this is we have a lot more interested in you than anybody in that office. You've got uh, you've got a tradition and your people and present all these other things to live up to. He said, well, I tell you, I just think that uh, part of the office would be to argue that case. A loser. The court will just uh, whip somebody else uh, on it. They at least be gentle and tell me wrong. He changed the balance of the court, though, won't he just be in the liberal's pocket up there 100% of the time? Uh, no, I, I don't think so. I, uh, I do. I, I think, uh, you know, it depends on, on whose place he's taken. Uh, I think there's, I think there are probably three up there whose place he would take that uh, would be uh, more liberal than he. No doubt it's how you vote on civil rights cases, but on uh, on crime and some other cases, uh, he uh, reflects an older uh, generation's attitude. Well, if he took a Black or a Harlan or a Clark, uh, he would be uh, less liberal in one and more liberal in two, wouldn't he? That's right. <clears throat> That's right. He would be. Uh, on black, he would be considerably less liberal on everything except civil rights. He would be more liberal on civil rights than black's been for two years now. Do you think he would be attorney general and your daddy on the court? Well, I think uh, that um, I guess I think other people ought to judge that, really. I am I know as far as I'm personally concerned that that would not uh, affect my judgment. I don't think it uh, would affect Dad's judgment. Uh, I'd hate to see Dad get off the court. I think he's at the height of his judicial power. And uh, I'm a little concerned, too, because I think he, uh, more than any other member of the court, stands for uh, a lot of things that uh, the American public is pretty strong for right now, tough law enforcement. Things that, that where I really don't agree with it, but uh, I think from the standpoint of your business, that uh, you don't uh, you hate to lose that. I think in the police community and in some other conservative 
area. That's why that ranks off the high peak. For you to replace him <coughs> with a liberal uh, would hurt you. It's, it's the things that we see in the, in the veto of the uh, omnibus crime bill here in D.C. People that were uh, incensed about that are the people that uh, seeing that the strength of the court. Yes, that's right. But if uh, my judgment is, if you were, if you became attorney general, he'd have to leave the court. No other reason than the public appearance that the old man sitting on his boy's case, they were taxi driver in the country, and uh, he tell me that the old man be judging fairly and his own boys uh, sending them up. And, uh, I think, in the eyes of every member of the court, that's number one. Uh, when you do that, you, uh, I think, lose the best friend we got on the court. I mean, the best, philosophically speaking. I think that he's, uh, I think he believes about what I believe. I think you're too damn right. Liberal, I think. He's got a little of that dash of the University of Chicago. Well, you're probably right. And, and I think if he's, he's, uh, he has that. So we tried to track him. I keep him busy working like a dog, but uh, I've got a liberal on that court, and they, they, uh, they long gone then. Long gone. I think it, it would have to put the marshal on him. And I think he just, uh, the votes they wanted, they, he would give them. I don't think he raised too much hell about wiretapping. I saw he went up there and what he did on this other case. Uh, the other was just custody. Instead of saying, you sons of bitches, you can't make me do that, I wouldn't have any part of it. I'm a free man. I'm not going to be a goddamn stool pigeon, a bunch of political racketeers. He just uh, went up there and played hell and then got humiliated and then came back and backed and filled. And, uh, I didn't like, I didn't think he, I didn't think he's a very strong character. But he, he would be on there, and my judgment is, put Hugo Black, Bill Douglas, Chief, the Chief, and Abe Forrest, just to have a field day. Well, I would, uh, I would think that they would, think uh, you could send a man to the penitentiary, by God, for raping a woman if you had a, if you, if you, if you had a photograph of it. He would tend to line up with that side of the court. I don't think there's any doubt about that. I think uh, he would be less liberal and he would swing over some. That side doesn't, isn't solid anyway. They, <clears throat> they're fractured up somewhat. But he would be certainly uh, far to the left or considerably to the left of that. What would he do on your damn fool antitrust cases where you all try to run the whole government because some professor doesn't agree with it? Well, he would uh, he would tend to be uh, liberal on those cases. He go along with uh, with uh, Douglas or Forters. Well, it's hard for me to say. I don't know if I really know. You know, there's a difference, don't you? Sure. Sure. Yeah. <clears throat> He doesn't. Uh, he doesn't do his homework, and uh, he goes somewhat uh, by sentiment, by guess, by golly on things. Uh, but I think that he would tend to be uh, center of Douglas. He's. Uh, That's something I feel more strongly about as much as wiretapping. I just think you all have built you a damned empire where you've got the veto power over the President of the United States. I think it's outrageous. I don't think you've got a goddamn bit of business to tell the controller what to do or FCC what to do or anything else. You just set yourself up as a great policeman. And uh, uh, you just pass judgment and you, you assume that you're competent and everybody else is incompetent. And I think it uh, you got to assume that when the president appoints a man to run the Federal Power Commission, 
that he ought to he ought to know more about that than some damn professor that happens to be an assistant attorney general. And the same thing's true with the control of the currency. The same thing's true with the chairman of the FCC. And the same thing's true with the chairman of the SEC. And I just think that they're beholden to a bunch of damn little column leakers over there that have neither principle or judgment or character or justice. I just think that they're discriminators. And um, I, I, I know that that's an extreme viewpoint, and I'm expressing it extreme, because uh, I definitely feel that way. Now, if I'm going to mold, put my image on uh, what I feel, now, I can't do it on what uh, Grant felt or what uh, 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 Kennedy felt or Eisenhower. I've got to do the way I feel. I may be all completely wrong, and they may disagree with it. And they may all want to write a better history for myself than I'm willing to write. But I guess that the man's entitled to write his own history and ought to after he hears everything. And that's the way I feel about the, about this thing. And I think I'm just an absolute captive of a guy I've never seen. Or maybe I saw him once. I think I saw him once. And it's all right for him to go out to Gussie Bushes and uh, mess around here. But then he just fired by God blank without rhyme or reason. And I... I don't agree with that. Now, uh, I, I think he's got a lot more power than the than he ought to have, and, and apparently more than the attorney general's got, and apparently more than the president's got. Because uh, I expressed myself on two or three of these things. It's just uh, it's it's uh, it just seems to be dicta. Well, it's uh, not all that it should be. It's apparently. <coughs> irrational process, but it's uh, it's just one intersection in the whole system. It's not the, the whole system. They don't get into the ones they get into, they've got tremendous power, but they don't get into so very many. Oh, it just depends. They didn't get into Ford and Philco, because Bill Green went down and Bobby told him not to. And I told Ford to go get, uh, go get uh, Bill Green in Philadelphia and let him merge. They don't get into that. And they wouldn't get into it if Buckley was involved. He's a goddamn great crusader. But he's the Buckley funeral today, you know. He's the old Truman. He never has lived down going to Pendergrass. And Pendergrass was an honorable man compared to Buckley. But you have your cake and eat it too. And I, I happen to know about uh, the bank merger in Houston. A hell of a lot bigger bank, and I know Albert Thomas did it. And I happen to know about the bank merger with, uh, I mean, the Ford and Philco merger because I directed it, told them how to do it and what to do, and they did it. And I just don't, uh, I don't understand how they can be so conscientious and have some such great conviction on some of these matters that affect us, like Bobby Baker, but not have a goddamn bit about Meyer Feldman that refused to report forty thousand he got over here on the record in checks. And Nick didn't have a damn bit of trouble washing it out. He just cleaned it up and he smelled like a rose. You're familiar with that, aren't you? Well, I've heard about it. I don't, uh, I don't know all the details. He wasn't a little clerk for majority leader. He was a counsel for the President of the United States, like Jim Landy. And he came in here and he received in checks $38,900 payments for fees from television companies and didn't report it. And I had to get him out here and got him out here quick and Nick just took it and wrapped it up and just got it in good shape. And I'm glad he did. I didn't want to see Kennedy humiliated and I didn't want to see Feldman humiliated and I didn't want to be embarrassed myself. But that actually happened. And there wasn't anybody could defend it. I had our best tax people try to figure out some way. All he did was just get the check, endorse the check, deposit it in his account. They charged it as an expense, and he didn't report it. And he